Well, welcome back from that uh, break. We're glad you're still with us here on Morning at NTV. We are now heading into our Kickstarter discussion and we are saying the Inspector General of uh, Government's Office, the task in accounting. <coughs> we have with us the Inspector General of Government, Honorable Betty Olive Namisango Kamia. You'll be seeing her shortly. But before we begin the conversation, let me just give you a preamble to our discussion. The Inspectorate of Government has launched a probe into alleged massive corruption at the Ministry of Energy. The move came as IGG Betty Kamia made a spot check to the Ministry yesterday inquiring about accountability documents from the Permanent Secretary, <coughs> Irene Batebe. She was given up to the end of uh, today that is Tuesday, to provide those documents. The IGG's probe is based on a whistleblower's report about corruption, especially in awarding contracts in the Rural Electrification Program. This follows the IGG's report, again, on a government agency, NSSF. The questions are as many as the expectations from her big office. Let me just allow the Inspector General of Government to greet us. A very good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning and um, thank you very much for inviting me to this program. Um, dear viewers and listeners, good morning. We are honored by your presence, but I would be remiss if I do not pose the very first question that comes in light of what is on the lips of uh, many Ugandans. We shall be returning to your raid at the Ministry of Energy, but the NSSF report. Mm -hmm. Some stakeholders are asking questions about what you found out and your conclusion. Mm -hmm. You want the former managing director, Richard Biarugaba, to pay 4.4 billion Uganda shillings, yet you do not find any the substance in the allegations that were labelled against him by the minister or what was found in the report by the select committee on NSSF. Explain to us. Well, um, first of all, there were three or four sources of, um, of issues that we were looking at. Mm. First was the letter <coughs> from the minister then there was another um, petition to the president by people who are known as representatives of workers, savers, and uh, trade unions. Mm -hmm. They petitioned the president. Then there were um, also the report from parliament. They referred some issues to us. And in the course of our own investigations, mm -hmm. uh, some issues emerged. So we had four sources of uh, issues that we were addressing. But I will say that the report is a 320 page report. Yeah. And also backed by 198 annexes. So it's a huge piece of work. But what um, captured, I think, the imagination mm -hmm. of the people is the summary that, that I made. Mm. But really, it's a 320-page report. It's a huge report. Yeah. And was given a lot of um, uh, depth in, in analyzing the issues that were raised. But for instance, one of the issues that the minister raised was that the managing director had inflated the price of buying land in Nachigarara to 400 billion and when we checked it had actually it was actually 250 billion mm. the Nachigarara land but they also <coughs> wanted to buy another piece of land at 150 billion which brought it to 400 billion but all the 400 billion was not devoted to Nachigarara land mm. so we said it is not true that the price was inflated to 400 billion, but had been kept at 250 billion for three consecutive financial years. Mm. I mean, so um, I, I don't know, I, I think that people 
would like uh, normally mm. um, when it uh, well I, I didn't want to use that analogy but people uh, they, they would like when a dog bites they would like to no barks they'd like it to bite okay but but sometimes you don't have to bite for the sake of biting mm. that's what an investigation is about because many sometimes times sometimes you bark so the thief uh, runs uh, sometimes there is <coughs> no thief maybe it's just a bird that was <laughs> <laughs> fluffing in the bush interesting there mm. so and i mean we we went to um, depths like that mm -hmm. And in some cases, they said that uh, the managing director had uh, had um, received um, gratification of three billion shillings. We have contacts in Malay, not Malaysia, Mauritius, mm -hmm. our counterparts, yeah. whom we almost have no at, at a personal <coughs> level. We checked in Mauritius. We followed the trail to Dupont in London. And we didn't find any um, any um, uh, uh, trails of that. So we just the report says what we found, and if what we found does not convict the managing director, we cannot find something that will convict him. But there are a lot of we made a lot of um, administrative uh, recommendations, mm -hmm. and also recommended. Um, amendments to to the act that would strengthen um, management of the fund so you'll find that there are almost six pages mm. or even eight pages devoted to recommendations some of them for prosecution others for refunds others for administrative um, action quite a lot of that and others for um, I improved legislation. So th it is a big report. A lot of work was done. Okay, there have been reports also that uh, this particular report, the draft, was first uh, given to the Minister for Gender, Labour and Social Development before it was outed. Does that mean... That is not true. It could have been edited? That is not true at all. Absolutely not true. The minister got the report on the day that we addressed the the, the press, mm. uh, uh, and I, I doubt because if even if you check my my WhatsApp communication with the minister, she kept asking when the report coming out because I need to resolve this matter, and I said we are working on it, we are almost concluding. So the minister did not get the report mm. until. We were ready and we sent it to the minister and the same day we also released it to the public through the press. All right. When you look at the NSSF saga and the fact that there has already been another inquiry by the select committee, members of parliament led by Honorable Mwine Mpaka, and then we have the IGG also conducting and coming up with another report. For the select committee, the recommendations might be considered might not be considered for the igg given your mandate you can investigate and prosecute mm -hmm. you might have not found substantive evidence of allegations against the managing former managing director but within your investigation there are aspects about the fund that you may have agreed with mm -hmm. the select committee mm -hmm. or recruitment mm -hmm. purchases and uh, for example the corporate social responsibility actions and then the slash fund of four 50 billion uganda shillings mm -hmm. how do we move forward on this are you going to prosecute you or see, you will also wait for recommendations to be worked on by another um, entity you know our judicial system mm. and it's quite frustrating to us and i think to many people is that before you go to court, you must have evidence beyond reasonable doubt. That is, I would call it even a, a frustration. Mm -hmm. Because some people say, we know it. We can even <laughs> see in the case, uh, for instance, the case of the Mabati. Yeah. They, said, but the, 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 they took it. And, uh, 
but the judge will want evidence beyond reasonable doubt. So in many cases, you conduct an investigation and you think you have evidence, but when you take it to court, the judge wants evidence beyond reasonable doubt. And that normally frustrates or brings investigations mm -hmm. to a stop. That is why I know you were going to get there. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> you say, okay. in, you, you, sometimes you, you decide mm. to take other action, like ordering a refund. Because you could go to court and the case is thrown out, you know, mm. for lack of uh, a signature, you know, something like a, a signature. So um, I, I think it's a, that's our judicial system, and we find it quite frustrating, but that is how the system is. If you don't have evidence mm. beyond reasonable doubt, then you get frustrated. And, and sometimes you go to court and spend years, like uh, in the case of Kazin, 10 years down the line, we're just, and there's appeal and appeal and appeal. So sometimes you cut your losses and manage the case at a certain level. Interesting there, just dig a little bit deeper in cutting losses and uh, how do you determine what case, of course you've said sometimes if you don't have the evidence uh, to be conclusive enough for the judge to decide in your favor or in favor of the public and then you choose to... Well and sometimes it's even, uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I hate to say, manipulated. It can the be manipulated. The system is manipulated. Yes, yes, yes. Have you identified these specifics and uh, either written to a higher I wouldn't want to, uh, for well, resolution? I wouldn't want to go into that mm. at this point, okay. but it has been said at very high levels that corruption is in all sectors of government or of, of, of society. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that the judicial system is outside our society. Yeah, society. I hate to say that, but it's... Uh, it's a reality. Uh, let's quickly close this uh, NSSF matter and then return to yesterday's events in, uh, that saw you and uh, your team uh, go to the Ministry of Energy. Now that uh, the former managing director is on the spot of uh, a refund that you are seeking, how are you going to go about it if he doesn't? Well, if he doesn't, he will have to be prosecuted. But we ordered um, the refund is <coughs> between the managing director mm. and the director for finance. Okay. And the reason is they didn't really take the money, but they made decisions that caused the financial loss. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, many cases, it's not as if people, you steal the money, yeah. but they take responsibility for the Causing decisions financial loss. they make mm -hmm. that cause financial loss. Okay. In the case of, um, of uh, uh, NSSF, I'll give you an example. Uh, Parliament, um, there was an amendment mm. in the Act where it was um, uh, required that the board be representative or of all interests, gender, uh, people with disabilities, skills, interests, and all that. Mm. And <coughs> so after that amendment, the minister directed that the board be reconstituted to take care of that. And uh, management or even the board engineered the resignation of two members of the board so that they can have um, women put on the board. But so those people resigned. Mm. But there's no provision that if a board member resigns, they should be compensated for the time that they were, because the resignation is on their own volition. But I think behind the scenes, they resigned on condition that they would be compensated but it is not provided for in the law. If you resign on your own volition, bye-bye, thank you very much. You seem to be revealing what appears to be the modus operandi of the government where compromise in certain cases is widely used as an approach to solving the corruption problem. 
Not really. Have the you? moral compromise, especially when, for example, you, you say you cut your losses and then you look at the fact that you might be frustrated at a point here and there, that is injustice to the average Ugandan. Well, um, it depends on how you want to look at it. Mm. But at the end of the day, um, the, the, the investigations might lead to the point that we can make that decision. Mm. And, um, you know, we can, uh, um, the, law, the law gives the IGG uh, um, a, a wide berth mm -hmm. to make the decision either to prosecute or to give orders. And part of the orders, some of the orders can be to um, order a refund or any other administrative action. So prosecution is not the only option mm -hmm. available. Okay. The fight against corruption is one that of course requires a lot of stakeholders, including myself as a moderator of a show in the media. Just a few weeks ago, you came out very strongly and turned out to be controversial when you suggested that uh, the mandate to fight corruption solely lies with the citizens. And you seemed to suggest that the citizens do not understand that. And you explain it to them. However, some saw the tone and the choice of words as insult. <laughs> Others looked at it as a bit of uh, a gloating about the fact that, well, you seem to be in a good position. And like you said, it is the least of your concerns to want to be effective in fighting corruption because, after all, you're driving an SUV, you're going to the best medical facilities, you live in plush, good environment. Where is your heart in fighting corruption? Well, first of all, let me say that this was picked out of a 40-minute presentation. Mm -hmm. I was speaking to um, uh, employees of NMS. That's right. And it was a 40-minute presentation. And so this 30-second bit was picked out mm. absolutely out of context. Absolutely out of context. Absolutely out of context because... Even the statement before, the, just a one sentence mm. before. I'll ask the producer, before you explain entirely what you meant, if he can uh, get us that clip of the Inspector General of Government uh, speaking and imploring Ugandans to come up and uh, fight corruption because those who they think will fight for them are enjoying the benefits of corruption. When that comes through, we shall be able to uh, see exactly so we can figure out whether you are saying it was taken out of context mm. or it's exactly what you say. But go ahead. Let's but have your view. That, the truth is, um, our new drive mm. is to get the population involved in fighting corruption. And because I said they're the primary victims That's right. of corruption. And when you are fighting a war and the masses are not involved in the war, Mm -hmm. They don't mm -hmm. own the war. You may not really be. It has to be a people's war. What the people, what government provides mm -hmm. are policies, is leadership, uh, is the environment, the, 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 the uh, legislation. But any war, whether it's for democracy, whether it is for independence from uh, colonialism, it has to be owned by the masses. No, it sorry. has to be their war. So I was telling the people, it is your war because you are the primary victims. What happens here, and tomorrow I'll not be IGG. Mm. I'll be on the other side. That has to be known. But the person who will come in mm. into my office as the IGG will occupy my chair, will drive that car, will get all those benefits. So I also am interested in the day when I will not be the IGG. Yeah, IGG. I would like to go to Mulago and find Mulago well equipped for me. Mm. But um, what I was telling the people, and the president said it himself, is that the people are the victims. And the Pope said it. There's even something that's trending mm. from the Pope, where the Pope said that corruption actually hurts the poor. 
because the truth be said, people in government are insulated. True, they are the people who are driving the, those VXs. Mm. They are the people who have health insurance. They are the people who have salaries and all those things. So what I was telling the people is that you get involved. If people don't put pressure on government, mm. everywhere in the world, government operate on pressure from the people. Some pressure is out of the vote. You either do this, mm. I don't give you my vote. Okay. So people all over the world operate from pressure from the people. The people have to know what their power is to hold government accountable. When and you so say, I was telling yeah. people, you cannot be observers. Mm -hmm. When people are stealing your money, you've got to get involved in the war against corruption because you're the victims. Many will agree with the reality that uh, the people you want to be at the forefront of fighting their own battles are not empowered to fight. Actually, they and are. the policies that are rolled out by the government, executed and implemented by the various agencies to help the population get empowered, are not doing exactly that. So it's a case of somebody, a government perhaps, that has disempowered somebody, telling them to do something about their situation. No, the people are empowered and one of our role, and the reason I was saying that, is to create public awareness, mm. to sensitize the people that you cannot be observers. And let me tell you, when people are empowered, I'll give you an example. There was corruption in Entebbe Airport. Who fought a war? The yeah. people. Social media. Social war. media, the mm. people. There was a war on the potholes in Kampala. Who fought a war? The people. So the people just need to be empowered to know that they can do something about it. That's and as I yeah. said, mm. sometimes they just fight with their vote. Mm. Well, that's a good one. You preempted by next question because I was coming to the extortion story at Entebbe Airport, the exhibition on potholes mm. and in the health sector. That was a people-led war. The people did their part on social media. Mm. How far are you in helping people fight that battle? What have so you taken what up? happens mm. is that um, there's the people on the one hand who have power and information, but then there's government on the other hand who have instruments of authority. Mm. So that is the partnership that we look for. The IGG has the instruments of authority, or police, mm. or the judiciary. You have the instruments of authority. But the people have information. So this partnership works that you bring the information, all your needs, and I have the, the authority, the laws from par and parliament has the authority mm. to make the laws. It's a partnership. So the point here is that people cannot be observers, or even commentators. Because sometimes we just say, oh, motokai afe. No, don't be <laughs> observers, don't be commentators, mm. be owners of the war. And then government will respond, or anybody who has authority, will respond to your demand because you show that you are there and this is what you want. All right. We shall be looking a little bit. Oh, later on we shall of course be looking into some of those other aspects allow me just to bring you, uh, your attention to the illicit acquisition of wealth act mm -hmm. and how it is uh, helping in cases where <laughs> ugandans can't explain how their money is made mm. or some of us can't actually mm. <laughs> come to terms with the fact that a ugandan has made so much money in six mm. months mm -hmm. they can put up a mall they can uh, drive three SUVs. Mm. Illicit acquisition of wealth in Uganda. Your position as IGG or your tenure so far, what have you discovered and what is it that you're pushing? Um, well, let me say this. Um, IGG's mandate is within government. Mm -hmm. Corruption within government. 
but there's also a lot of corruption in the private, in the sector. private sector. Actually, as much mm. corruption. The procurement person in a private industry also inflates prices, also buys air, also buys poor quality um, uh, 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 products for their institution. Mm. You know, <coughs> the HR person in a private sector also takes money to give jobs or demand sex or whatever. Mm. So whatever is happening in the government really is also happening in the private sector mm. and hurting us equally. That's because right. what happens in the private sector also makes the economy expensive and less competitive than other economies. So I hope that at some point government will address itself to, to corruption mm. in the private sector okay. because it is as rampant as it is in a government. That Many people in private sector <coughs> also mm. live beyond their incomes, their incomes because they do several things that they shouldn't do. That should so not exonerate your ability to come for those who are within government absolutely. and how they are acquiring wealth. And that is why when I came into office, the first thing we promoted, two things. One, um, expand our horizons beyond mere investigation and persecution mm. to recruitment of the entire population to know that they have to get involved in the war. That's, that will work towards prevention. Two, we also are promoting the lifestyle audit. Mm. And the lifestyle audit works this way. It's a partnership between you, the man who lives in a carbon, who knows that your neighbor, a public servant, is building a mall. Of course, the IGG sitting here in Kampala Can't. doesn't know <laughs> that the man in Butalija, <laughs> that uh, the, uh, uh, a government official in Butalija yeah. is building a mall. Mm -hmm. But it's the neighbor who, sh who knows, and the neighbor should tell me. But I have the instruments of power, so I can summon or investigate this public official. But the one who would have given me information he is the neighbor, neighbor who knows. So the part, it, that's how it works. It's a partnership between the people who have information and the government official who has instruments of power to do something about it. It's not like the public will just sit on the veranda and watch, and watch as the inspector of government uh, looks for <laughs> lifestyle audits. <laughs> it has to be a partnership. All right. That's uh, uh, how information is quickly shared and whether it's actually taken on uh, forms the crest of the crest rather of uh, the whistleblower relationship when it comes to revealing and outing some of these uh, uh, corruption scandals. We shall be taking a short break, Madam IGG, but when we return, that conversation will continue and we shall also go into what happened yesterday at the Ministry of Energy and what exactly is the amount, so to speak, of corruption in this particular uh, sector of uh, government. Do stay with us. We'll be right back. You're watching Morning at NTV. <clears throat> Welcome back. We're glad you're still with us here on the Kickstarter segment of Morning at NTV. We are speaking to the Inspector General of Government, Honorable Betty Olive Namisango Kamia. Before we went into the break, we had uh, broken down some aspects of uh, your work and uh, how you are progressing on that. You had spoken about the fact that a person out there can trigger mm -hmm. an investigation mm -hmm. into the wealth acquired by an individual, especially if it looks <laughs> abnormal and unexplainable. One thing I know about <coughs> making money is that there isn't a set formula and you cannot tell somebody that within one year you should not have this kind of money mm. or you should have this kind of money. Mm -hmm. There are people who will make profits mm -hmm. and uh, huge returns mm -hmm. in whatever they are doing. Mm. But for public servants, there is need to, well, account ensure that for it. account for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. If I'm earning a million Uganda shillings as a public servant, but I drive a 400 million shilling car, that is cause for attention. You should explain it. It doesn't mean that I cannot get that car. Mm. Somebody can gift it to me. Mm. Well, I think that's what people have to explain. When we look at the 
whistleblower initiative and how far we've come in allowing people be confident to come out with information on government officials illicit wealth what are the safeguards that allows for many of them to actually come out without necessarily fearing and when that happens you you can share with us uh, how much the whistleblower gets so you can perhaps inspire more mm. well um first of all let me say how well mm -hmm. the population have come into this war i appreciate that okay. because a lot of the information <coughs> we have Excuse actually me. comes from whistleblowers yeah and uh, but people uh, need to understand um from where you came from mm. that when people relate that the money being stolen is theirs that's where they should come from mm. to say he has stolen he is stealing my money rather than government money he has stolen my panado he has stolen my money <laughs> people need to own yeah and <coughs> understand that this is their money and that should be the motivation to get involved in the war that it is your money that they are stealing that should be the motivation and you know it is so bad that sometimes somebody say goes to Mlago hospital loses a loved one mm. because there's no medicine the next door neighbor is probably the person who is charged with the buying medicine but they didn't buy it they built themselves a mall so at the village they even call him Musei. he comes to commiserate with you and he gives you a mabugo of uh, half a million or even 200,000 and you even uh, raise him up at the funeral thank you so much you've been wonderful you have to relate that this is a murderer you know that's how you have to relate this person to the person who to your loved one mm. dying so when people own own corruption to that level they will get involved they will get involved and that's the kind of uh, of sensitization that we are instilling in the people of Uganda it is not government money mm. it is your money and so you're reporting a thief who stole from you not from government if people understand that mm. then they will rightly get involved they will and they can understand it mm. if their food security concerns are taken care of first it all comes back to government but mm. allow me ask the question about the legal framework around the lifestyle audit and mm. how it's being approached mm. if i am uh, drinking expensive wines mm. and uh, earning five hundred thousand why should it be a concern um it's a concern because because you are accountable mm. you are accountable to the people even I'll, I'll give an example if your neighbor you're both living in a, in a rooms next door and your neighbor's husband um, sleeps through the day mm. then goes to work in the night in the night and you don't know what they do and then they sleep during the day and they leave at 10 o'clock and come back at 4 in the morning people get concerned and report there's somebody here whom we don't really understand and that's how the police raid those cutway and find you know all those things you've had stories mm. because somebody took the trouble not even because they work in government but because somebody saw that there's something that is not adding up and they took the trouble or the responsibility to inform police mm. and police comes and searches your houses and that's how they find all those uh, stolen things and, uh, uh, and, and and dangerous weapons because somebody took the trouble to get involved to find out mm. and so it's the same way especially if that person is a government official then you take ownership you could be stealing my money you know and, and and people have to get uh, and in, in other countries developed countries i think almost everybody is a is a state spy mm. 
Mm. You know, in developed countries, you don't cut a, a, a tree in your own compound if it's against the law. Your neighbor will call the police and say, and that's how it has all co it has uh, come to be. To uh, you know, you, you you mistreat a child, even if you're the parent. Mm. Now people know that you can't do that; otherwise, no, the we neighbor we will report you, you to police. So where are we? So we begin we? to police each other. Because as Ugandans, we are on social media, mm. we watch TV, mm. and we see ladies and gentlemen who mm. live large. Mm. And when we think about your approach the lifestyle audit mm. and we can't really relate to who you are looking into but we see people living large mm. so where are we who, who are you looking into who have you identified as living large and uh, you're questioning or requiring them to bring forth their sources of income uh, do you ask for bank statements sources of uh, their money who they visit if they went to dubai or is just Tell us how it, go, it goes on. Within, uh, and we've done some more. Uh, first of all, mm. government officials are required to declare their income, assets, and liabilities mm. to Many the IGG. Don't. Actually, quite a number do. You know, they're about, uh, I'll tell you, there are about um, 380,000 public officers. Mm. I mean, people who get a salary from government, who are on the... On the uh, Minister of Public Service register. Yeah. There will be about 380,000. And each of those is required to declare their income, assets, and liabilities to the Inspectorate of Government. And I can tell you that about 280,000 actually do that mm. or have started. This is a new law that was amended in uh, 2022 uh, to, to widen the, the net. So starting from there, the law also requires um, the IG to investigate. Uh, the law requires the, uh, the inspectorate of government to verify mm. those declarations. And so um, when someone is living large and we are mobilizing everybody to be their neighbor's keeper, Okay. Everybody to be their neighbor. Maybe keeper. to bring it home more easily is if Chris Higeni on a Friday is seen tossing wine, you know, and uh, having a good time. Mm. And you are concerned. You're like, but I know Chris Higeni in the media, mm. he earns a mere 50,000 mm. shillings. Mm. How is it possible that he's, uh, you know, he has the ability to mm. hang out in these uh, good places, he drinks expensive wine, mm. and do you give me a call and ask me to appear before you and explain that? How does the lifestyle audit go? We are still working mm. uh, on it, but, and, I'm, and that's why I said I'm very proud of Ugandans, yeah. because they are responding, really responding. Um, but we have, a, 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 we're working on our, um, call center hmm. um, it'll be operational soon but we have a whatsapp number oh, okay. where people and I would like kindly request you to display it on the screen but um, if you, you can read it loud I will read it and slowly please <laughs> so that people can uh, but I'd kindly request you to display it on the screen and it's zero seven zero seven seven two one one four six you can't call this number mm. you can just say you send can only send what's up we text. also have an email address which is complaints at igg.go.ug mm. we receive and i'm very proud of uganda they really have there they're sending messages all right that number is uh, given to you zero seven zero seven seven two one one four six do not call on that number just text via and please there, there's more you can use this number for mm -hmm. take pictures uh, yeah and send those somebody is and, uh, send videos pictures. somebody is misusing a public vehicle mm. they are loading a police vehicle with the charcoal take a video send it make sure to get the number of the vehicle 
those houses, those malls, uh, somebody is building a, a house in, a, in, in Rukonjiri, <laughs> take a picture, send it to us. So use the new uh, um, IT mm. technology to be as informative as you can. All right. Yesterday's events at the Ministry of Energy, you said to the media the raid was as a result of a whistleblower's information. What information did the whistleblower avail? Um, well, for purposes of, uh, of um, not undermining the investigations at this point, mm -hmm. I would not like to divulge a lot of information okay. because then people can uh, uh, begin can, to manipulate can begin evidence. To manipulate. <laughs> but I will tell you that we did get a whistleblower account mm. of so much that is going on in the Ministry of Energy, especially in the Rural Electrification, Electrification program. program. There are people who repeat, you know, they even repeat um, invoices. The invoice that was uh, paid two years ago or uh, is, uh, is brought again now and repaid. And this program talks about billions and billions mm -hmm. of shillings. So I do not want to, for purposes of not undermining the investigation, mm -hmm. I'm not at liberty to give so much information at this point. Let's but have a picture of the magnitude of financial loss that government is suffering because when you say there's a lot that is going on at the Ministry of Energy, especially the Rural Electrification Program, you can understand my anxiety mm. and the fact that I'm like, hey, a lot that is going on, we need to know what this a lot is. Well, I really cannot say what it is until I've done the investigation, mm. but I will tell you that uh, the actu the activity mm. you know um uh, 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 the fraud there's so much fraud and uh, i beg that maybe you invite me here again in about two weeks time two weeks time and then we can talk about okay. about this uh, what action points did you give the permanent secretary Irene batebe um we uh, you call it a raid let's take it it was a raid actually yeah and this is a new system that we are employing is we we are inspectors we've decided to wear our inspectors hat not just investigators mm. because investigators investigate after the fact mm. but uh, with the new act of uh, inspection we hope to prevent to make sure that things are going right um, laws are followed procedure are respected and regulations that way we can promote prevention rather than wait for corruption to happen then you start investigations and prosecution so we shall be wearing our inspectors hat and just raid to use your word mm. on institutions we don't we will not be giving notices we won't uh, expect an invitation but when we come for instance, we asked for all these documents, the contracts, um, the payment vouchers, the certificates of completion, you know, we, we took, I, I, my instruction was that we go away with those documents mm. yesterday. Okay. And then we investigate those documents, hoping that they will lead us to the next level of investigation. All but right. I can also say mm. that more and more, uh, you will be seeing us um, happening at government institutions without notice and without um, invitation. You know, like inspectors. We are inspectors. Mm. Yeah. We are going to be inspectors of government, not just uh, prosecutors and investigators, but inspectors. All right. We are nearing the final bend of uh, this discussion. It's uh, bottom of the hour. Allow me to talk about the spectre of corruption in its entirety without necessarily focusing on what we've talked about here there's a time you said at least 10 trillion uganda shillings is lost annually through corruption uh, this is a huge amount of money that could go as you put it then into if you put a billion shillings to every parish 
there would be a lot of uh, development per year. Per year. Mm -hmm. There would be a lot of uh, development projects that would be achieved. The soul of the nation is tainted. As a Ugandan, as an official in government, we know some of the uh, problems that we face as a country. We also know the solutions. Some say those who have the power don't have the will to solve these solutions, and they are comfortable going on, just like you said in that very controversial video. If somebody asked you a sentimental question as a country, how do we move forward? I think we are moving in the right direction by one exposing the extent of corruption to the public and also um, translating into the opportunity cost what it could do um, for you mm -hmm. but also empowering people to own uh, to take ownership that uh, of the of, of, of the loss it's there the war mm. of the war I, I think <coughs> that's, uh, that's the Excuse best me. way mm. to move like I said I mean people don't like to hear it but it is the truth that and uh, that the people all the people in the government mm. always respond to pressure that is why there's so all over the world there's a lot more work done during as we approach elections you know because all over the world governments respond to pressure from the people from demonstrations from uh, election um, uh, 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 from things like that mm. so the best thing I think uh, I, I'm proud that we are mobilizing the population to get involved the leaders have the instruments of authority have the legislation have the mandates but the people must drive them and that's how it is all over the world the majority the uh, demand mm. of their leaders to account and if the majority the people don't uh, demand of their leaders then they, they get uh, sloppy mm. and, um, and complacent, and we don't want that. So really, the population must be alert. All right. I think it's about time that we wrap this up, but uh, I'll just take one a question from a gentleman who has uh, contacted me through Twitter, a DM, corruption in the office of the IGG. Because, mm -hmm. yes, you do fight corruption but you're still employing or supervising Ugandans yes and like you said the private sector is also corrupt mm. the IGG's office could also be corrupt true or how come when you read the Ministry of Energy when you read these other agencies the media is all over you call us and uh, how are you doing it to the extent that we are not hearing of your actions on corrupt officials within your office um, first of all, we have a, an IGG within an IGG. We call it the Department okay. of uh, Internal Inspection. Uh -huh. And uh, it's like a, a, a military police. Of, I mean, we have an IGG within, within mm. the IGG. And I am calling upon people, like I said, if a, 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 an officer of the Inspectorate of Government is involved in corrupt activities, please let us know. I said it's a partnership mm. between you <coughs> and us. If they have, uh, someone has amassed wealth beyond the salary of the non salary of a public servant, and that person works in the office of the IG, the best weapon is to let us know and we'll deal ruthlessly with that people have been have lost jobs people have uh, been uh, imprisoned i know that but we depend on the public also to let us know because this mm. thing of corruption takes two yeah. to tango and it's done under the table so please help us to fight corruption within 
the IG. All right, Inspector General of Government, Honorable Betty Olive Namisango Kamia, many thanks for coming to Morning at NTV and uh, sharing with us what you are up to as an institution that is attempting. Thank to you for inviting me and what have is a good no day. doubt a very a pertinent issue within the country. All right, that will do it for the Kickstarter. I am told that uh, border border riders or operators for that matter, have concerns on how municipal authorities, city authorities across the country want to streamline their business. There is often conflict and misunderstanding on how this should be done, either because it's miscommunicated or enforced in a rather forceful way. Our reporter has been out and about trying to ask the questions on those affected. Let's take a look.